All right, guys, we made it for another episode of the Social Marketing Hour. I want to thank you for being here on this Thursday morning. For those of you guys that are alive and if you're watching the replay, I hope that you enjoy it. It should be for about an hour or so. We're going to be talking about marketing, of course. This is the Social Marketing Hour. Today we've got a special guest. Before we get into the conversation with our guest for today, I want to give you a little bit of a... Uh, housekeeping in regards to what's going on in today's environment. Uh, there are a lot of changes. As you guys know, there's a big disconnect in the world uh, when it comes to the economy and things like the stock market. And it's still something that you don't have a good explanation for. Uh, you look at the stock market has been accomplishing record-breaking numbers in the middle of an economic meltdown and businesses closing every single day and um, not being able to operate the way that we have operated for decades. That doesn't make any sense. That's when I tell you guys that you need to pay attention and you need to make sure that you are staying on top of your game because this is the way the bubble, for example, happened in 2007 with the real estate world that people kept on buying and buying and buying and they kept on buying the market and they didn't realize it was about to explode. It's an important thing for us as entrepreneurs, as business owners, as smart people that are taking advantage of today's opportunities to really understand history and know that the history repeats itself every single time. It happens all over, the, all over the place every single year in which we see things happening nonstop. For example, we had Facebook develop into a powerhouse of a company and uh, that same process, YouTube went through it. Uh, people doubted the, doubted the platform and then it became the go-to place to find information. Uh, Amazon has been doubted every step of the way. The whole internet has been doubted and all these things are repeating itself over and over again. Well, in the same way that those things have happened, the economy has had repeating patterns. And one of those patterns is economic bubbles. Like if you look at Let's, let's just be analytical here for a second. Let's look at exactly what's going on in today's world. COVID-19 has hit us like a deer in the headlights, right? Like they say, like the saying goes. Nobody expected it, and it has been devastating not only the country, but the world everywhere. Businesses shutting down every single day, uh, companies falling apart, layoffs, massive unemployment rates. We got about 20% unemployment rate in this country, record-breaking numbers. We're still not operating the same way. Restaurants are only operating at 30% capacity in some cases, up to 50% depending on the states. Um, movies are barely opening up again. There's a lot of restrictions everywhere. All these things are happening, but still, when you look at the economy, when you look at the stock market, you see these companies breaking record you see the economy hitting all-time highs. In the last couple of days, it's, uh, it's been going downhill, and then yesterday it bounced again. But as you can see, these things don't communicate with each other. And I don't know if you guys know Warren Buffett, but he's a historical uh, Wall Street investor. And one of the things that I've learned about him in the world of the economics uh, in general is that he talks about being greedy when everybody is fearful and being afraid when everybody's getting greedy. It seems like people are getting greedy right now and it doesn't even make any sense. Now, I don't tend to be um, a Debbie Downer. I don't tend to be a negative person. I like to look at always the positive side and what's happening right now, but I want you guys to be prepared because the point is that right now, marketing is more important than ever. You need to master marketing. If you master marketing, you are in control of your own economy. If you don't, the economy controls your economy. So that is the, the major, major point of what marketing can do for you. If you understand marketing and how to get attention on this era and be able to grow on this environment no matter what, then you decide if you keep your quality of life or you increase your quality of life or if you go downhill. You decide that. But that's going to be based on your ability to market your products and services. So right now, I can tell you in 2020, as we are recording this on this morning, September uh, 10th, 2020, I'm telling you that something's going to happen to the world when it comes to the economics of it. Because it, you cannot just close down businesses the way they're being closed down. You cannot just lay off people the way they're being laid off. You cannot just have all this money being uh, poured into the economy and expect things to remain the same. Trillions of dollars have been poured into the economy. 
there have been, for example, uh, re realistic things that are going on right now. The government in the United States has given a lot of relief to people out there and to companies, from the big companies to the small businesses. Everybody has gotten a ton of relief and they have kept on getting that relief. At some point, those funds will run dry. So if you look at the economy and the inflation that's happening right now and the stock market having trillion dollar companies like Facebook, like Google, like Amazon, like Apple, like almost like all these companies that are Microsoft, et cetera, that are becoming trillion dollar companies plus all the other ones that are growing, it doesn't quite add up. At some point, one that, once that money runs dry and unemployment is not getting paid anymore, unemployment benefits, because I don't know if you guys know some of the things that happen in the US, but there's a, um, an, a, um, a government program called the CARES Act. We'll get into uh, in a second to uh, the uh, interview that I have today with for you guys, but there's a CARES Act. It's called the CARES Act. Okay. This thing has a lot of things on it, right? It's a, it's a government program that has given trillions of dollars to the economy. This thing will run dry. One of the examples of uh, what this program is doing, one of the examples is unemployment. They are covering people's paychecks up to $600 for months, up to $600 a week for months. Well, it's nice when you don't have to work and you're at home all day long, binge watching television shows and doing all that stuff and you have money in your pocket and you don't even have to work for it. But what that does is that it conditions people to getting free money. And at some point that money is gonna run out. And that's two out of 10 human beings in the United States are getting that paycheck right now, consistently every single week. At some point, that unemployment benefit of money in exchange for nothing will run out. And what's gonna to happen to the economy when that runs out? Aside from all the other businesses that are closing down, which are hundreds of thousands of businesses in the United States alone. Well, at some point, people are gonna stop spending money. So I'm telling you, this right now is a time for you to get really good in the subject of marketing because the ones that are gonna differentiate in any field, in any niche market, are the ones that really understand marketing. If you do understand marketing, there are gonna be endless opportunities for you to grow your business. If you don't, you are gonna probably struggle in this environment because let me tell you one thing, and I'll guarantee you this as a fact, it's all being inflated. It's all being pushed in the world. It's fake, it's not real. This supposed stability in the economy is all being created by people out of our control. And it's not something that we control ourselves. So you gotta be ready for that because it, it is a realistic fact that COVID-19 has been devastating. When you look at the stock market, guys, how do you explain, uh, I'll show you guys something here just directly on my phone. If you open up the, uh, the app, uh, the, the, um, and today is going up again. It, how do you explain the economic collapse and meltdown, all right? If you guys see this uh, screenshot right here. If you look at the economic meltdown that has caused COVID-19, it was all the way down right over here. And then just like nothing, it has skyrocketed all the way up. Can somebody explain to me logically why the economy is saying that we should be at the highest levels in history? even though there has been massive economic shutdown worldwide and the pandemic is still causing fear and spreading chaos around the world. That's the one thing that I will tell you guys, you gotta be able to look at the facts and look at what's happening today and prepare yourself for it. Again, don't be afraid, don't lose sleep over it, but I want you guys to understand that you gotta be prepared for it because it could happen. Do you know how many millionaires were made in the 2007 meltdown? How many people actually produced billions of dollars, millions of dollars? How much wealth was created in this country? You don't know because what you see is the doom and gloom of the meltdown that happened to the rest of the population that was not prepared. You gotta get prepared. What a great opportunity for you to understand social media so you control your own economy and it doesn't control you. So my message to you guys is, 
put the attention on becoming a marketing expert right now, understanding Facebook, Instagram, messenger marketing, WhatsApp, understanding TikTok, how to do content, how to get your content seen by people, how to differentiate yourself from the rest of the world, how to be somebody that really knows how to get a message out there. Put your attention there every single day, just like I have done for many, many years myself that has put my businesses, my agency into the position that we're at today, which were very, very profitable and very successful and growing right now by leaps and bounds because we have been prepared. For me, it's an exciting era. Why? Because I control marketing and I understand marketing better than most people out there and because of that I know that I can always generate a want for my products and services. I can always find people that are interested in what I have to offer because I understand marketing. How do you become a marketing ninja? You study every day and you apply every single day. It's not really a secret. How did I become who I am today? I didn't go to university to study marketing. I barely graduated uh, high school, true story. I basically just had my way with words and I got my teacher to change my grade from F to a C so I can graduate high school. That was not it. I studied in today's environment that you guys all have access to. I Googled, I YouTube, I searched for things, I studied, I did free training, I did webinars, I did seminars, I did programs. That's what I did to make myself a marketing ninja in control of my own destiny. If I get wiped out and I lose every single penny that I have ever made and I don't have anything to fall back, fall back on, I know that I have marketing knowledge. And because of that, any of you guys that want to master the world of social media will probably pay me a lot of money just to hear what I have over here just so I can give you guys a strategy that's gonna work. And that is the value of increasing your own intellectual property, your own ability to market your products and services, all right? So my beginning message for you guys today is to master marketing and keep on paying attention. So today, I'm gonna to bring in a special guest, a student of mine, uh, and this guest right here, it, we're gonna be talking about his business. Uh, he has, also, he's a marketer too. He's, um, he's been studying my stuff for a while and he has some successes and he wants to talk about how we're gonna be able to uh, go next level. He's a copywriter. He has a business on the subject of copywriting and which is, by the way, one of my favorite skills and one of the most scarce skills out there. I can tell you that from 68 staff that I have, the hardest thing that I, that I always um, have in hiring is a copywriter. That's such an important skill right there. And uh, it's something that has to be practiced and developed and not many people have it. So we're gonna talk about that particular business of his and we're gonna talk about anything marketing in regards to how to get more leads and, and be able to get his services out there. So I'm gonna be pausing for a second here and bringing him on the stage. All right, so can you hear me well, Julio? Julio, it's my fault. I need to unmute you one second. I know what happened here, man. Okay, here we go. Okay, now, can you hear me well? Yep, I can hear okay. you. Okay, great. Okay, so Julio, do you want to tell us a little bit about your business? Uh, sure. Well, to introduce myself, uh, my name is Julio Chavez. I am one half, uh, my better half, my wife is the other half of, the, uh, of Copy Identity. Uh, basically, we're essentially a, a copywriting agency. Uh, we specialize largely in two different areas of expertise. Uh, one being a e-commerce side, dealing with smaller businesses like handmade businesses, things like that, and then the other side being about um, like actually building and establishing an agency. Since we've done that, um, you know, we we've processed everything step by step, so we we know the the difficulty um, that it takes to grow from just you doing all the work yourself and grinding and trying to be on like Fiverr and Upwork and all that to actually growing your business and being more of a, uh, going into more of a managerial role and having um, employees and, and, and contractors that help you uh, further grow your business. Okay, great, fantastic. So right now you're focused on, on doing copy for brands and businesses. Yeah, uh, so right now, so actually kind of going off of what you were talking about, see COVID um, impacted us a bit as well. So 
what I've found, and I know, I know this isn't necessarily universally true, um, you know, we are still in the process of growing our brand, you know, so for copywriters out there um, that are very well established, they may not necessarily hold this as, as true for them. But for us, what we ended up doing is we went from a copywriting agency that solely focused on services like, you know, like writing PR stuff or um, product descriptions or emails or whatever the case is, you know, webinars. Um, we went from that to actually focusing down on smaller tickets, but from a niche subscription service standpoint, thus the e-commerce side of it, as opposed to just the, um, the more service-based business. Because so many business have been, businesses, sorry, I'm stumbling over my words, um, <laughs> have been hit that it with COVID that it, it I couldn't ethically bring myself to say, because man, I've been on so many coaching calls that said, I have $10,000. You're charging me, you know, 7,000 for all this copy that I want from webinars and all this other stuff. Um, I'm not going to have a lot left over for ads. Do you think that that's okay? And I just couldn't bring myself honestly to say, um, yes, I, I, in my opinion, copywriting is, is essential because, well, you know, it, it is my expertise and my it field. And I think is, it is important for yeah. sure. Um, that being said, I, I think that there, I wouldn't be able to sleep well if I knew that I took so away someone's opportunity, which I do think is a bigger opportunity to get people into the door um, through ads and things like that, if that makes sense. Well, it's a combination of things, right? Because yeah, if, yeah. If, if you are a beautiful artist, Mm -hmm. And you know how to paint these incredible pictures, uh, but you don't know how to get people to see them. Right. There's no purpose on that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I always talk about that particular analogy. Uh, you know, we, we, we have a lot of people that have created massive impacts in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, artists are an example of that. You know, you got the Da Vinci's and Michelangelo's and all these people. How many other people that... Cre created incredible works of arts. They were masters in their work, but never figured out traffic, how to get their products seen by people. Right. Da Vinci, Michelangelo did. They, you know, they, we, don't, we recognize them for being incredible artists, but mm -hmm. we don't know what happened along the right. way for them to grab their art and say, hey, look at my stuff and get on the process of like having people discover them. So it, it's a combination of elements. You need copywriting. Of course, but you yeah. won't survive if you don't know traffic. But, mm -hmm. hey, you need traffic, but you won't make it if you don't understand copywriting either. Because exactly. then people are going to see you, and you're not going to create a need, a want mm -hmm. for your products and services. So it, it's essential. Copywriting, I believe, is one of the most undervalued areas in the world of marketing and I push on that a lot and I, I think I, I, I uh, you were listening in on the on the intro were you listening in yeah yeah so it, it's it's for me is the hardest skill to recruit and it has mm. been I can train I can bring in a, a, a Facebook ads a media buyer and I can train them into being a professional I can show them my my process, and I can show them uh, how I create a campaign and find an audience and create, a, create an ad. I can show them all that. That's teachable. Yeah. Copywriting is such a hard skill, and it has mm -hmm. to be practiced and practiced and practiced. And the main thing that I, that I like to talk about, because I developed the copywriting skill myself. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't study it. I just created an ability. And the way that I like to right. explain what copywriting is really all about which again, guys, this could, we can make it into a, a copywriting masterclass because it's such an sure. important area. When you look at Facebook and you look at the news feed on Facebook, the first thing that captures your eyeball is not the video or the image, is the message at the top of the, vi of the video or the image. Actually, that message determines if somebody's going to engage with your video. So I, I tell mm -hmm. people, look, you, you have to know how to write that message because if you don't write it correctly, people are not going to read the rest. They're not going right. to engage. They're not going to watch the video. On a YouTube video, for example, the title, that's copywriting. If you don't mm -hmm. know how to write that message, that title, people are not going to click on it. So it, it, it's applicable everywhere. And also when it comes to... Uh, if you're building a messenger bot, if you're doing a, 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 an email campaign, if you're doing a text message, whoa, copywriting is so essential. And, and sometimes, even today in my organization, I see things that I cringe because they're being written incorrectly. And I have to continuously be educating on this particular area. So I can teach mm -hmm. advertising really easily 
and develop a master ninja marketer, but copywriting is such a valuable commodity that if you master that, it's gonna mean that much more to your business and your ability to capture audiences. Uh, so w the way that I like to look at the subject of copywriting is you can become a good copywriting if you have the ability to stop being yourself and become that other person. If you have that ability, if you can stop being who you are, hey, I'm a Manuel Suarez, I'm the Facebook ninja, I'm an expert in social media marketing, for a living I capture attention and I sell products and services and I have a business called Natural Slim. I have to stop being that person and I have to become the person on the other side. And when I become that person, I know how to communicate to that person so that person is interested in what's going on. If I don't do that, if I say something like that is just being myself, I know I lose out on the attention of people because you gotta become real. And I know that's not what we're here to talk about, but the subject of copywriting, it's, it's, it's an art and it's such a beautiful subject and it's so powerful because when you know how to write words, marketing, your marketing becomes that much more powerful. So that's something that, uh, I appreciate what you're doing on your side um, because I know how difficult it is to develop that skill, uh, Julio. So that's good. So how have you done so yeah, far you. in that world? Uh, you know, we've done well. Um, so going, kind of going what to you were saying was um, just real quick, and I'll, I'll answer your question a little bit uh, more extensively. Um, I think it's it's hard to train because copy, as you mentioned, is an art. You know, it, it's it can be a little subjective. I mean, of course, there are formulas and things that you can kind of play with, but it takes a finesse and a charisma and a salesmanship, and you have to understand um, like personalities and things like that. And and that's where I guess my um, come up and started is I, I did corporate uh, sales as a corporate sales manager. You know, so I've personally sold millions of dollars worth of inventory. So had teams that sold you know ten times that um, over the years. And so when my wife, uh, who's active duty, we came over here to uh, Hawaii. Um, when we came over here, I had to quit. I had to decide whether you know to continue her career or to quit uh, and quit my job, or just for us to stay there and quit the military. Um, we decided after many, many, many sleepless nights to come over to Hawaii. So I ended up quitting from that, and then from there, kind of like what you were saying is. You know, I, I didn't, it wasn't me taking, going to college and taking journalism classes and things like that. It's like, it was me taking course after course and reading blogs after blog. And, you know, my wife had been kind of dabbling in it initially. Um, so, you know, looking at, at what she had written and then taking my mentality as a sales manager and as someone who, who sold literally for a living, you know, like that, that was how I paid my mortgage. Um, I took all of that and I took the ethics behind it. And I said, let me, let me figure out copywriting in my way. And so we, we became um, successful. Yeah, as I said, we're still uh, building our brand and our business. Um, and as I mentioned with the COVID thing, we just, what we decided to do was slightly pivot away from pure services as far as like writing email series or writing a, a sales letter or sales page um, into more e-commerce niche specific things and breaking down our, our trainings into more of a like mini courses that we do something like we'll do free classes where we teach about email marketing how to write headlines um you know how to grow on pinterest or you know etc cetera, etc cetera. um and yeah it, it's been doing really well for us as well um, that's great and i think that's one thing i wanted to kind of pick your brain on later but i'll, I'll get to that in a second are you doing um projects or are you doing retainers for your with your clients so we, so at initially when we started growing, we um, did projects only. And then from there, we decided, hey, you know what? It's better to, to have one client, as, especially as, as lead generation. You know, it costs uh, a decent amount and it takes time and effort to actually book them and, and get everything. So uh, from there, to answer your question, it, we um, started getting them to retain. So we pay, they pay us, you know, 1500 a month to keep us on. And then we would do X amount for that. And and go through the process. Which, which is great, by the way. I don't know how much you put together, but a $1,500 retainer for copywriting. Copywriting can be expensive. So I like that mm -hmm. thing that you have going on for sure. And, and um, w in your case, um, what is your onboarding process? Just super curious about it. Like, so if, people, if people have an advertising budget, do you yep. also advertise for them? Or are you just doing the copywriting and then handing over the keys to them? Okay. Yeah. So good question. Um, it's actually the second, it's the latter. So what we do is we do, we'll do all the copy for you, including the ad copy and things like that. But then it's, um, 
going to be up to you or an ads manager to actually go through the process of all that. Um, I, you know, we obviously run our own ads and we've learned to optimize to some extent, but I certainly am still in the process of really learning um, how to become a, a ninja, so to speak. Right. You know, so it's a, it's a process. So it's going from one skill to another and hopefully, you know, I'll be able to replicate that in the future and, and continue the agency because if you can't, um, if you can't replicate it, you know, if it's not replica replicable, Jesus, I can't even talk this morning. Replicable? I, I wouldn't know there how to go. spell that, my, pronounce that myself, yeah. man. Where, where are you from, Julio? It's not scalable. Uh, yeah. Texas. Texas. Uh, yes, Latin sir. roots, right? Probably. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, my mom's a Puerto Rican. My dad's Mexican. They met in a oh, tortilla nice. factory and fell in love. That's great. That's awesome. <laughs> well, my, I'm Puerto Rican. My wife is Mexican. So we have the oh, same combination. Go. Yeah. There you go. Cool. Uh, that's good. We're, what part in Texas? A uh, smaller town called San Angelo. It's uh, kind of like smack dab. I in know the San Angelo well. We have family. Oh, okay. There. Yeah. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah. Nice. I've actually been there before. Um, I have family there. Uh, I was just right now. Literally, I just flew back from uh, Midland uh, mm. Od in Odessa because I have yeah, family yeah. there in that area. I have some uh, some family that are farmers, ten thousand yeah. acres, and they have big land over there. So we, I, we lived, my family, we lived for six years in Harlingen, which is south uh, Texas, mm -hmm. border with, uh, uh, um, with uh, Matamoros um, and uh, Reynosa, over down okay. there. Yeah, right, so right. I lived there for many years. So I have, I'm a big Dallas Cowboys fan. Anybody that knows me knows that I'm a Cowboys fan. So I'm big on Texas all the way. That's for sure. There you go. Uh, Julio, we got all kinds of people here asking things about copywriting. It seems like they want a copywriting masterclass, man. <laughs> I'm willing to do it. Let's do it. You and I could probably do that well, but let me, yeah. let me have you ask, uh, ask me some questions. I know you want to pick my brain. Let's talk about that, man. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. And, and by the way, I mean, I have a couple quick, uh, uh, I wrote a couple things down, a couple quick tips. You know, I was speaking to Devin. Um, does everyone know Devin? I don't, I don't know if they know Devin. Well, if you don't, Devin is a brand manager for me. He helps me coordinate all the uh, events and he, things over here. So now they know. There you go. Um, so yeah, so I was talking to, to him a little bit earlier and I was realizing like I, I need to make sure that I'm providing value to your audience as well. So I, I do have um, some copy tips and agency tips and then kind of like general business tips. So I wrote my stuff down too while we were trying to get everything situated uh, earlier. Um, what was your question? I'm sorry. I totally forgot. Tell me what, how you want to pick my brain. Go ahead. Ah, yeah. Okay. So I did have a, a question. Um, and I wanted to get your opinion on it was because, because of our pivot towards a more subscription based, uh, and by, and by the way, niched, um, service. So what, let me just say that real quick is what we do, uh, right now, what we decided to do was go real deep into the niches that, itself. So instead of just saying, I create handmade products, you know, like Etsy, things like that. And just uh, what we did is do did many courses and templates and things like that for jewelry businesses. So all of our examples are through jewelry and jewelry clients that we've had and successes and stories and how their Etsy shops work and what their customers say. And, and I think that's something that is severely lacking. And I even wrote that down as the um, number one biggest problem for e-commerce in general is, uh, lack of education. And, and I just, I feel like anybody who's listening, if you want to get into the e-commerce space, as opposed to just being a coach that, you know, teaches other digital marketers, if you wanted to go into the e-commerce space, that is such a huge gap because if you were to like, as an example, and I, and I don't mean to, to plug them on your podcast, but I'm just going to use a, an right. example. Um, if you go to like social media marketing, uh, what is social media marketing.com, whatever, um, those guys, if you look through their blogs and whatnot, a lot of times they'll have like one, they'll be like top five things you should do to grow your Instagram as an example, right? Now I know they're talking to everybody, so they have to do this, but like the very first one will be like some small e-commerce coffee brewery thing. But then the very next one is about Nike. And the, the distinction there between this company that makes, you know, $30,000 a year versus this company that's a billion dollar company, like it's hard for e-commerce brands to actually connect the dots and see how the hell am I supposed to do the st second step, let alone the third and fourth and fifth, right? Right. So what we did, and that's why we decided to niche down and, and go into that more subscription-based service. Where we write these templates and we write you know, social media copy for them and things like that because we can, 
actually say jewelry here as opposed to just handmade and then they have to change a bunch of different things. So my question to you is back to kind of us pivoting. How do you see the world now through the lens of COVID and everything as people are trying to, I guess you could say, hold on to their money or, or make better um, and more conscious decisions on their money. How do you see that going with people who try to create courses uh, and you know sell them for a thousand dollars versus smaller things like creating mini courses and giving those away as like freemium offers and then upselling coaching and things of that nature right uh, did you see the the formula my sequence that i came up with <clears throat> have you had a chance to like see i came up with seven steps uh on on how to and we can detail them right here uh i did seven steps on how to penetrate this environment. You call seeing that, Julio? I don't think so. Okay, good. So I'll, I'll break it down over here very quickly uh, because okay. this, this is a good uh, point. You should be able to still see me, but I'm sharing my, uh, my, hear me, but you can hear me, right, still, Julio? Yeah, I can hear you and see oh, you. Okay, good. So perfect. So I'm going to break down the seven steps over here, all right? And this will answer your question, all right? So number one, um, you got to figure out your superpower, and uh, I don't know if you know this podcast uh, called Perpetual Traffic. Have you heard about that podcast? Yeah, I'm subscribed okay. to it. Okay, great. So I was just there two weeks in a row. And I, mm -hmm. you should go back and listen to that uh, because uh, it was a great podcast. I detailed this formula right here. Uh, it's, a, it's a system. It's a plan to follow. And um, I detailed it probably for an hour and a half. We did 45 minutes last week and just... This last Tuesday, they launched part two of that, which was exciting for me to be a part of that podcast because that's been one of my favorite podcasts for many, many years. And they had me on the show in the last couple of weeks. First thing is superpower, right? So you already know what superpower is. In your case, you're a badass copywriter. You're really good at what you do. You're a marketer and you have tips and you have information that can make somebody else better. So that's the first step. Number two, you got to obsessively Forgive me if I'm doing any typos. Communicate about it. Obsessively communicate. Right? So you have to be willing to go and grab that superpower and spread mm -hmm. it everywhere in as many places as possible. You have LinkedIn, you have Facebook, you have Instagram, you have Instagram TV, you got YouTube, you got Snapchat, you got TikTok, you got Messenger, you got WhatsApp. Any place, I mean, you even talk about Pinterest, anywhere where you can spread the word about this thing that you have, which is your ability to help others, you put it out there. Uh, number three, we have uh, provide enormous value. And this is to answer your question right here. The way that I like to explain this point is like, you got to look at, you got to look at what is the thing that generally you will sell for a thousand dollars. In, in a great economy? What is the thing that generally you would have people pay you a lot of money for? And this is what you're gonna do, man. You're gonna give it away to people or do introductory things that bring them into your world because right now, this world has one big word over it and that is skepticism. And make no mistake, no matter what the economy is telling you, no matter how explosive the stock market is, how incredible things seem or appear to be in the middle of an economic meltdown and a total recession and a destructive path that COVID-19 has left for all of us along the way, there is skepticism and that's yeah. inevitable. So how do you break through and eliminate skepticism? You got to build a road that provides a path for people to trust you and eliminate that idea that you're out there because you want their money. You gotta give, 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 give. If two years ago, I don't know how long you've been following for, you heard me talking about providing value first and value and value and value, and you hear all these guys like Gary Vee and a bunch of these people talking about value, 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 and we all talk about the same thing, but at the same time, we walk that talk and we build empires around us walking that talk of value, 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 value. Well, right now, that is a thousand times more important. Right now, you give value and you give it away and you don't sell anything until you have these people on your world. 
Now, am I saying that you can't be selling your products and services right now? Please do not mistake that. Absolutely not, not for one second, but it has complicated the path a little bit. And if you don't do this path, your hard earned dollars, your money is going to go into the garbage bin because you're not going to have people's trust. So when you invest in advertising, people are more skeptical than ever. So you got to make sure that you eliminate that skepticism by building a road for them to trust you along the way. Superpower, obsessively communicate about it. If you look at, in my case, I do hundreds of publications every single week. I'm working on doing more. I'm here providing value to you guys in the social marketing hour. I'm doing content and training every single week. I do free webinars, free seminars. I'm out there trying to just give all the value that I can. I'm not even selling my $2,000 core anymore. I am actually just providing value. Obsessively communicate about it, provide enormous value. Again, at this point, you're gonna structure that thing that is that $1,000 course or thing, and you're gonna to try to spread it into several things that are gonna be more valuable so you can do what? Number four, build audiences of people. You wanna build audiences because these people are the ones that are gonna allow you to generate income on any environment. This is how you create your own economy. Without these people, you cannot create your economy and people are going to be determining if they're gonna give you business or not based on their experience with you in the past. So building audiences does absolutely determine that, all right? And once you have that audience of people, then you move on into creating some of these strategies to bring them in. So we have five, six, and seven. I have them over here. Exactly, let me refresh my mind. So five is... Oh, there you are. Yeah, you see me? Yeah, I lost you for a few minutes there. I was texting Devin right now saying it said uh, unable to join session. So I wasn't sure exactly what happened. Oh, but interesting. I uh, were we okay on Facebook? So if you ask me any questions, I sorry if I ignored you. Oh, no, no, okay. I didn't ask you any questions. So I think we're good. I don't know what happened, all right? So I think we're good right now. I don't have any evidence of uh, it being gone on Facebook and YouTube, though. Okay. I guess it was just my end. I don't know what happened. Okay. I think it we're is. good, right, Christian? Yeah. Okay, good. Something happened on, okay. on, on your end. I don't know. Okay. We're I'll good. figure okay. it out. I'll refresh this in a second, and then you can watch this replay right here. Uh, yeah, no problem. So you can see what I explained right here. But we're going over the seven steps. Okay. Was it a few minutes that you lost? Uh, it, it was maybe like legitimately maybe a minute and a half, two minutes, somewhere around there. Okay, great. So over here is lead magnets, and I'll explain that in a second, and then get marketing knowledge, and then final one, sales over here. So the selling happens here, okay? So you gotta build a strategy that takes people from your ability that you have to help them to seeing you in social media, communicating about that ability. Like anybody mm -hmm. that's here, we got a lot of people here on Facebook, we have some people on YouTube, they know what they're here to learn. They're here mm -hmm. exclusively to learn about marketing. They're not here to find out about my story or learn about flowers. They're, they're here because they know that I have a superpower. Yep. My superpower is the ability to help them understand marketing better specifically in this environment. So they know what they're here to come, what, what they're here to get. Obsessively communicate about it, provide enormous value, meaning that, hey, I'm gonna show you a roadmap, here you go, here's a formula, here's a sequence of action steps to do, let's go. We generate those audiences. How do you generate those audiences? Well, you're gonna have people watching your videos on Facebook, people are gonna be visiting your blogs, listening to your podcast, they're gonna be engaging with your Instagram profile, you're building audiences. And what a lot of people don't know, people that are not marketers, they don't understand that we are building footprints with these people. And they are digital footprints. And we know if they can, if they're watching a video, if they're not, if they're visiting a website, if they're messaging our page, we have all that data. So we're building audiences. And then at this point, uh, Julio, is where you can create your mini courses so you can start generating identities. 
At this mm -hmm. point, and again, my dad always uh, taught me, and my dad is a great, um, he's an absolute legend. Some of you guys have heard about this guy. He is uh, a big mentor of mine, one of my biggest mentors in my life. I had the pleasure of working side by side for the last decade with him, and I've learned so much from him. One of the things that he always taught me is like, son, you never go to a marketing campaign. You never go after something unless you have a strategy. Please put a strategy together. Know exactly what you're going to go after, what is your goal, what is your idea, what are you trying to accomplish here, what determines what makes it successful, what is the funnel, how are you going to lead them into a conversion, what is the exact road. You don't just do advertising. You got to do strategy. And this right. is a strategy right here. And you got to sit down and you got to work it out first before you start doing anything else. You got to work it out. What's your superpower? How are you going to communicate and where? Are you going to do podcasts, videos? Are you going to do images? Are you going to do articles? What are you going to do? Are you going to do all of it? Uh, you're going to provide enormous value. What are you going to talk about exactly? What is your content going to be about? I don't know if you watched my interview with the legend Dr. Eric Berg. Did you, Julio? I did, yeah. Okay. Well, that's a great, like, the mindset that it takes to become a content creator. And this guy... Uh, how he broke down his process and how he's been doing it for so long and how you got to put your head down and just do it and how it pays off in a big, t in a big way later on. Well, that's yeah. the way you want to, um, you want to have that mentality for that. And then over here, you, this, this is kind of like part of the world of marketing that you're building these audiences, generating these audiences on social media, on these platforms. And then over here, you can do your magnets, right? Like your mini courses, uh, your free resources, your tutorials, your DIYs, your templates for uh, e-commerce brands, your this. And then you bring them into your world. And, and once you bring them into your world, th there's, a, there's a reason why I'm putting over here, get marketing knowledge. Because Julio, you're in my group. Um, you're in my program, right? Julio? Uh, no, actually. I, I mean, I've, I'm part of your um, group as a whole, as a community, but I'm not in the, um, the actual coaching program yet. Got it. Okay, good. So what I was going to say is that there is so much information on the world of marketing, mm -hmm. so much that you can do, that the way that I have it set up is that I have to do every single week a training. Every single week I do one hour training. Generally, it's about an hour and a half, and we break down strategies that are working today. I cannot just do a course. Because in marketing, right. courses and technology change all the time. So I have to mm -hmm. have a continuity training. And every single month, I break down what's working today. So you got to get right. marketing knowledge. Because at this point, if you generate leads, I see a lot of people failing on this world. I see enormous failure because they generate leads, but they don't nurture them. They don't put them through a sequence. They don't educate them. They don't lead them down a funnel. Nothing else happens. So you're going to go to waste. So building yep. a list uh, on ManyChat, for example, doing ManyChat or doing a, uh, uh, or you're back on screen now, doing ManyChat or doing a uh, uh, Infusionsoft or Active Campaign or Constant Contact or whatever it is that you like. I personally, mm -hmm. as you know, you might have heard me talking about that before, I'm personally very into ManyChat because ManyChat... Yeah. It's multi-channel. Uh, it's not really a replacement to Infusionsoft. It's not a replacement to Clavio for e-commerce brands. It really isn't. Uh, it's far from it, but it is a multi-channel platform. You can bring people in. You can deliver a mini course. You can extract phone numbers, emails, subscribers on Messenger, and now build relationships mm -hmm. on three platforms at the same time. That by itself is something that I, I want to get knowledge on, and I want to be an expert mm -hmm. on the subject of how do I manage these people once they come into my world? And then at the end of it, at this point, sales, all right, over here, then you're going to figure out what are your next level of engagement offers. I'll tell you in my, in my case, um, uh, Julio, in my case, what, what do I have going on? Because I do a lot of free. I do a ton of communication. So I have social media. We're doing 250, 300 publications every single week. Some weeks we've done 400, uh, and we're all over the place uh, on Instagram, yeah. on Facebook, on TV, Instagram TV, on YouTube, on LinkedIn, everywhere, right? I mm -hmm. do all of that. Somebody like you, for example, maybe you're not part of my coaching, but maybe you have gotten value from what you have oh. seen for free out there. Well, for that's sure. my first level over. of engagement, right? Have you gotten value from what I've done in my, my content? Absolutely. 
Right. So my next level of engagement is my coaching program, which is a $97 a month program. If you trust me enough that you have gained that confidence that my education is going to help you get more results in your business, then you say, okay, you know what? Manuel has convinced me that he's worth 97 of my dollars a month. Here you go. Boom. That right. for me is not the end of end all. I want to make sure that I give you the tools for you to become successful so I can sell you a $10,000 a month retainer very soon. So you mm -hmm. see, I have a journey. Not only that, if you're an Amazon seller, if you're an Amazon seller, I can show you and I can sell you Amazon ranking services. I can handle it for you or I can teach you exactly how you can get it done yourself. So I have a suite of services that I offer right. and products over here only. I can tell you one thing, people that are on my agency, I have an agency right now that uh, does millions of dollars a year. We have 68 staff. We've grown from the ground up, myself just three years ago, to now who we are right now. My agency is built on this journey, exactly yep. built on this journey. I did not, I have never run any Facebook ads to generate leads, never. None of you guys here watching this replay or here live with us right now, you have never seen an ad where I promoted AGM marketing services, never. Why? Because people come into my world based on this particular strategy. Mm -hmm. And what I have in AGM marketing is generally people that are my fans, number one, or people that have been referred to others. Like Dr. Berg was referred to me by my father. Uh, Dr. Right. Berg referred to me a bunch of people along the way. So I got referrals from people that have come into my world because of a great success of being of AGM. So either you are a fan of mine and you say, I trust you, Manuel, here's $10,000 a month, or you are somebody referred to by somebody that you trust. That's the road and that's the journey that I want you to build along the, self, along the way for yourself because I can see the potential. Copywriting is such an important area right now. Uh, you're right, copywriting for webinars, copywriting for emails, for messenger bots, for social media ads, for all these things, it's yeah. priceless. And you can definitely have something built that you could grow quite well. Does that make sense? Sure, yes, of course, yeah. Uh, I think, I mean, the, the whole process is, um uh, very detailed and, and and I think it's very powerful for the you know the audience in general to to take home. To kind of add to that, I think the two processes that I've struggled the most with, and I feel like uh, it probably speaks to most of the people who are listening and watching too, is number three and number five. So the third one being um, providing enormous value. So the idea or the concept of value in and of itself isn't that difficult to understand, but I think the idea of pulling the plug on it and saying, hey, here's my knowledge and I'm going to give it away for free is difficult for a lot of people, especially marketers, to to overcome because they, they're so nervous and scared that, you know, if, if I tell everybody my secret sauce, you know, I'm, I'm going to end up getting screwed somehow. I'm going to get replicated. People aren't going to uh, want to work with me. They're not going to see a point of it. But I think it, it's the, the mindset should be more of like a funnel. Like there are going to be a lot of people who generally hear your message, but you're trying to funnel them down into the people who are actually going to join your, your services or uh, coaching programs or whatever the case is uh, and see the, the value. Cause you don't need, obviously we would love a hunt, you know, a million people plus to all buy into our, our, our services, but you don't need that to be, highly success, successful, you know, like you go to Instagram, somebody with a thousand followers can still be running $150,000 a year business or more. You know, it's not, it's not unheard of or crazy. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's something that a lot of people probably struggle with and, and then providing that value in the form of entertainment, I think too, in today's world is, is difficult because so many people, um, marketers in general, just, we, we tend to be very beige, you know, we, we don't want to, we don't, um, because it's a lot of analytical stuff, it, it's not. It's hard to have fun and be funny or joke or whatever with it, and get people to really understand your brand and your personality. You know, and I think that's something that, as you said, you want people that are going to be your fans. You know, you don't have to act like an ass online. I'm pardon me for for cursing there. It's okay. Um, but you don't have to, you know, be crazy online. Like you can be yourself, for example. And and uh, although I've heard you joke and you laugh and things like that. Uh, 
you're also very serious in terms of like teaching and education. And I think that's a positive thing. And that resonates with me. Right. But there are other people that maybe they want somebody that's going to be like, Oh my God, guys, what's up? And like, they're taking selfies and, you know, like dancing take, on the take screen. Take superstars. Stuff. Take exactly. Superstars. You know what I mean? So it, it kind of depends on your personality too. So I think it's where that's part of the struggle. Um, and then number five, the actual strategy behind, it, I think it's, it's not difficult to figure out the lead magnet part of it. There's a million and a half websites uh, to give you ideas. Um, the problem I feel like, and it's something that I've just recently even overcome because most of the time we've been winging it to some extent, right? We may have like a general idea or concept of where we want to move or pivot or whatever, but we don't have it written down in a step-by-step -step formulaic, not even step-by-step, -step, like step and then step and a half, you know, like... It, you, in my opinion, that's what you, you really need. You need to break it down. You need to figure out, um, and this actually goes into my general business advice through the years of, of making mistakes and then having successes is for me. And I, I you know, if, correct me if you think I'm an idiot, that's okay. Um, but for me, I like to start with the end in mind. So I need, I need to know their offer or my offer. I need to know what I'm trying to do, obviously. Then I think about the beginning and I go, okay, what sort of strategy uh, can I implement in terms of what landing, what's the copy for the landing page going to say? What sort of images am I going to use? Um, what sort of lead magnets am I going to be promoting? The ad copy, et cetera, et cetera. And then from there, in my humble opinion, um, I think the middle ground, the content behind it is where it's, that's where you need to really be exemplary. You know, like that's, that's 60, 70% of the, the struggle is getting people to be aware of who you are, what you do, and then to like you, right? Because they need to be able to follow you and listen to you because otherwise, if, I mean, you can have a, a, a great uh, idea or a great service, but if you are so bland in front of the camera that people aren't even interested in listening to you for, you know, a, a 10 second spiel, um, you're never going to get anywhere. You know what I mean? Right. So having right. an understanding of, of content and, and understanding that takes time and thought and energy. And I mean, just pulling all this up, you know, took a team of people to work with this and get passwords and that and that, you know, it's, it's rough, it's difficult. And it's something that um, I think people don't understand. They just go, Oh, I'm going to take a quick little, you know, stock image, put hashtag ice cream day or something. And that's my, my social post for the day. When in reality, you look at these YouTubers, cause I have a couple of friends that um, uh, I shouldn't say friends, I should say more acquaintances um, that are, that are in the YouTube game have, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of subscribers, depending on who they are. And part of that content strategy is like, it takes a lot of time and effort to create this 10 minute video where the lighting's good and they're talking and it's editing and it's audio editing. And there's, you know what I mean? So like, yeah. it takes more effort than I think a lot of people understand, which is why I like to have the end in mind, then the beginning. So I can write all that out, create the emails, create the sequences, put it all into place. Um, and then from there, I can focus on the content because that takes time, thought, and energy. And I don't want to be, um, I don't want to be out there trying to do all these things while also trying to build a business in the back, especially right. as a solopreneur or only having one or two people around you as opposed to like an entire team. Right. Sorry for this long ass spiel. That's good. Good stuff. You know, the one thing that I can tell everybody that's listening here and I can tell you, uh, Julio, is that. It's very cliche to say this. That coffee looks, looks delicious, man. Hopefully it's good. Is it good? Uh, this uh, it's is very, tea, but yeah, it's good. It's tea. Okay, good. This is very cliche -ish, but in all honesty, the biggest weakness that I see on people is this one. This oh, yeah. is what we need to fix on everybody. And I'll tell you where we need the most uh, overall like weakness is in having patience for these points right here. Number one, for free. Mm. We need to have this patience right here. Your ability to communicate that superpower obsessively and provide that value, you got to put your head down and do it. I know it's very difficult, but when you think about it, this is the roadmap. If you go back to every single successful content creator, 
Some of them have gotten lucky because they were positioned in the middle of a big exploding wave, like the YouTube explosion, the Facebook explosion, the Instagram TV, et cetera. All those things, some of them have been very well positioned, but in the end, you're yeah. gonna find a common denominator in every single one of them, and that is persistence, consistency, right. patience, doing it every single day, every single week, religiously, time and time again. I was just talking about this with uh, the podcast host, Ralph Burns from Perpetual Traffic, which has an agency called Tier 11. Great guy, follow his content for a long time. 270 episodes on podcasts over several years, every single week. It takes persistence. It doesn't happen overnight. And it's very cliche -ish. Yep. Oh, there's no overnight success. But I'm telling you, if you can just handle this point, yep. while you find a way to survive, pay for your bills and, and uh, pay for your house and your mortgage and your schools for your kids, if you can figure that out while you build this, it pays back in a big way. So that's the number one thing that we all need to focus on in regards to this environment. You gotta put your head down and you gotta just do it and just really care about it. So you tell me, okay, good, the providing value part, but look, if you're not willing to go down this route, if you're not willing to just be consistent and provide that value and go out there, well, you're in the wrong business. Social media mm -hmm. marketing, the way that it is right now, I mean, we are in the social marketing hour, right? So we're talking about right. social media marketing. The way that you make it on this business is with patience, with persistence, with providing value, and doing it over and over again every single day and having a roadmap that leads them towards them buying your products here. Um, step mm -hmm. number seven. Step right. number seven, you can sell them stuff. Now, let's say that you have a Elon Musk type of vision and you create products like he does, Teslas, which by the way, I have a Tesla and I still, three years having this vehicle and I still am blown away with what they, what they do. I mean, just true story. I know we're past our 11 o'clock time, but I like to usually go a little bit over. True story, um, a couple of weeks ago, I have, I've had the Tesla for three years, all right, three years, and um, never had any problems. It's an incredible vehicle. Never had to put gasoline on it, obviously. Yep. Um, never have to give it an oil change. Amazing car. Right. It's, there's many things that I have bought that I have had buyer's remorse for, not this one. It's a Model S. Yeah. Uh, three weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, they visited my house, they upgrade my computer, my self-pilot, uh, my autopilot computer. Somebody comes in here in a Tesla Model S, uh, which is branded Tesla. They go into my driveway, they get the keys, and they say, hey, we're gonna just go in and replace your computer. And I'm like, whoa, for free? For free? Yeah, that's what we're doing. We're just gonna upgrade you. It's part of the, our services. They pull out the old self-pilot computer, they plug in a new one, and here you go. Hey, just so you know, it's gonna take a few drives and you're gonna be able to calibrate uh, the, the new autopilot and you're gonna be set. Instead of the 2.5 autopilot, you now got the 3.0 autopilot. Uh, congratulations, enjoy it. Not a single penny, not a dollar, right? Yeah. So I start driving it and this vehicle now starts stopping on the stop signs by itself and starts stopping on the red lights by itself. It's incredible. So unless yeah. you have a product like that, I mean, what's the, uh, um, Christian, give me the gimbal. Give me that gimbal for example, for, for a second. Unless you have a revolutionizing product, going direct response marketing in social media will not work. When this thing came out, this thing, you know what this thing is, Julio? Yes, sir, yeah, gimbal keeps you from shaking and getting all crazy. This is incredible. This is a yeah, awesome. revolutionizing product. It's a game changer. So when this thing came out, and um, so for, for those of you guys that don't know what this is, Google it, check out what a gimbal is or YouTube it, all right? Um, this thing by itself, this stick costs $800, all right? 800 mm -hmm. bucks, it's expensive, all right? Yep. I, at first I thought, is it worth it? Ah, every single penny. It's a revolutionizing product for people yep. that are capturing content, right? Yep. That product will sell on social media without you building an audience. I'm just proving you, proving the point of, do you have a product that is like copywriting, marketing, like myself? Uh, yeah. Do you sell supplements? 
Uh, do you have a consulting business? Do you have a tax service? Do you have a software, a program? Do you have a management business, management consulting? Do you sell beauty? Do you have design? Are you a realtor? Whatever the heck you do, if you're any of those, realize that there's another million of you. Another million yep. of you. As much as right. I want to say I'm special, there's only one Facebook ninja, there's a lot of options. There's a lot of agencies. Yeah. There are, every single day, there's people that think about joining us and they go to a cheaper agency. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get a second gimbal. You're not going to get a second Tesla. There's companies out there trying to repeat what, uh, what Tesla has done. BMW, Mercedes, Jaguars, all these guys are, are juggling and trying to come up with electrical vehicles that, that uh, drive themselves. Good right. luck with that, right? So in their sure. case... You have a product that you can go direct response because they're special. And if you don't have one of those products, please don't make the mistake of thinking that you don't have any competition and you're special because your yeah. product and your beauty cream is so much, more, much more higher quality and is created in the Mediterranean, Mediterranean from the mountains of the sea and whatever. Don't be yeah, yeah. romantic about your product. Eliminate mm. that, the idea that you're sure. so special because that's going to lead you towards failure because you're not. You might be, but not until you drive this, this particular roadmap. In my case, Natural Slim, we built it from the ground up in the US 11 years ago, we started that business. If I take my dad out of the equation, Metabolismo TV, three million subscribers, um, millions of followers on Facebook, 1.5 messenger subscribers. If I take away all those things, what is the difference between me and Herbalife, Nutrisystem, Jenny Craig? There, there's not. They're better right. than me because they have longer time branding their business. The reason mm. why I have actually been a competitor and we have stepped up our game and a lot of these businesses like Jenny Craig, for example, they closed down all the offices in Puerto Rico. It's because we have traveled this roadmap and we took a business from zero in the US to now we're gonna cross $25 million in the US only in this year, plus $50 million internationally from, from a million dollars just 15 years ago. So how do we travel that road? It's exactly this path. It didn't happen overnight. The first video, if you guys go back in history in my dad's YouTube channel, the first video was published, episode one, in 2013. We didn't really start getting any traction until 2015, 2016, mm -hmm. started getting some traction. Our first 100,000 subscribers was accomplished four years after doing videos every single day. 100,000 yeah. subscribers, we did a big celebration. Now, it's, it's a different deal because snowballs, right? So now we're, we sure. just crossed three million subscribers. Hard work, persistence, and patience. They sound really cliche, but boy, are they important. And if you figure yeah. out a roadmap and you realize that you are not that special, that you, are, you have competitors out there, this is what's going to make you special. How do you become a superhero? You travel this road. If you do this, you will become eventually somebody that people can trust and you will eliminate completely the word skepticism from, from the path. So the, the challenge is, how do you survive right now? How do you stop focusing in the present time and build your future? This is future building. This is not going to make you rich in three months. Right. It's not going to. It's going to make you powerful and rich over the next several months. If you work hard at it, best case scenario, if you're good in six, nine, 12 months of putting your content out there, you start getting yeah. enough attention. But it takes years. I've been doing it for years and I'm just getting started and, and yeah. having interviews with people like you, Julio, really does excite me because I know that I'm somehow creating an influence on you and I see a lot of people that are powerful that have learned some things from what I teach and that is, for me, very humbling. That's what it's all about. Yeah, it's sort of like that old adage of uh, it takes uh, 10 years to become an overnight success, right? <laughs> exactly. You exactly. got it. Exactly. There you go. You got it. You got any other questions for me, Julio? Uh... No, I think that, that pretty much wraps up what I think a lot of people, I mean, obviously there's a million and a half questions to ask you, you know, um, I can keep you on forever, but I think that's generally a pretty good uh, stopping point between my questions and just generally what the audience is, I feel like, um, you know, having issues with. Great, Julio. Why don't you give me a couple of your hot tips for people that are trying to figure out copywriting? I know you put a list together. I would love to get that from you right now, if you can share that with our audience. Yeah, so I um, I wrote down four main points because um, I, 
I don't want to, what I don't want to do is go over, um, you know, like formulas and all that stuff that, you know, that, that's, um, that's just too complicated for this small time period. I need to give you a, a quick little bite sized crunch, right? So a couple different things I want to talk about, and I'm going to look away from the camera for a second while I'm writing, reading this. Um, so number one is to kind of, is to be clear versus clever. I see that all the time where people want to, um, they always think that their headline or whatever it is, they think that it's just like so funny or so hilarious or just like, oh, it's going to be awesome whenever they, they see it because they're going to be so intrigued. But the problem that I've seen oh, time and time and time again is that if you're not actually clear with your message and clear with your headline of what they're actually going to get inside, it become, you, you tend to start to fall into this clickbait territory where people just aren't actually opening or people aren't actually clicking through when you're constantly teasing without giving any actual information like it's okay to to tease and and, and um tell them what's coming up you know but it's what i don't like is when you have a call to action that just says like um here's this surprise again completely void of context this whole email is just this long spiel about how they're how excited they're going to be when they learn about the surprise and at the end they're like click here for the surprise and it's like it, you will get some clicks from it but not enough and not consistently enough, like especially if it's a, an underwhelming situation where they're just they go and it's like a ten percent off coupon or something. You know, it, it becomes one of those things that you just become ignored because people are used to you uh, over promising and under delivering, and you should be doing the exact opposite, right? Over deliver, under promise. Um, clear number, versus clever. I like that. Clear yeah, versus yeah. clever. So lead people down so they know exactly what they're going to get along the way. Um, exactly. It, it, and it goes in line with what I've been telling people on the subject of copywriting, that you got to put yourself in the viewpoint of the reader. Also, we have very low attention span, which means that you got to be exactly, uh, you got to be very clear. Otherwise, you're going to lose people very fast. Exactly. 100%. Um, yeah. I mean, like I, like I said, there's just so many different variations to that. I can give you as, as examples that I've seen, but clear versus clever is always a a good starting point, um, which actually kind of leads into number two. Um, and it's almost like hypocritical for me to say, because some people are going to be like, what are you talking about? Didn't you just say to be clear and not clever? Uh, but number two is to show your personality, right? You want that. There's a difference between um, lacking context and not actually giving people information to where they don't want to click over. They, they feel like you're scamming them or something versus having fun, making jokes, um, putting yourself out there, if that's what your personality trait is, because you do want to be, you want to pump yourself up a little bit, right? But you don't want to be completely opposite because that's going to be so draining and demanding. And then if you start to fall off from that, people are, you're going to lose all these, this audience because they feel like they don't connect with you anymore. Um, so you want to take whatever your personality trait is, if it's really bubbly and like, like you were saying, like a TikTok influencer type, you know, where you're just like, everything is live and everything's, oh my God, everything's, you know, amazing or whatever, then go for it. If you are motivational and you're just very direct, like a Gary Vee or like yourself, go for it. you like, your audience is going to resonate with what you do. You don't have to feel like you need to copycat the rising star that's beside you, you know, be your own rising star and let fans come to you. Um, because like I said, you don't need a million people to buy from you. You just need a thousand, 10,000, like you need fans who are going to buy from you repeatedly. Um, um, did you have anything to add to that? I'm sorry, before I move oh, on. Oh, 100%. I like it. Your personality, be yourself, be true, be authentic. Don't pretend to be somebody that you're not. Don't try to be too convincing. Don't try to sell yourself too much. Just be yourself, whatever you, you are. Some people are comfortable in front of a camera. Some people are not. Well, yeah. you got to develop a skill somehow. Either you yourself or somebody else around you, you have to write, you have to take videos, you have to uh, do podcasts, whatever it is, but you be yourself. That's the way yeah. that you can do this long term because if you're not yourself, it, it becomes boring after a while because you're faking it. You're pretending to be something that you're not and that's going to be something that leads you down a road of eventually giving up on it. So that's yeah, why I, I like that. That's why I, I really emphasize whenever I, I coach people through like agency building and stuff, I really emphasize the sales training part of it because like I said, I was a, a corporate sales trainer uh, or sales manager really. So part of that was training. Um, and that's such a big part. Is, and, I, and there's so many people out there that say like, I'll teach you how to sell online. They've never sold a damn thing in their life. Like they've never actually gone out. They never opened their trunk to sell CDs. They never gone to, a, you know, became a, an associate for a furniture company, whatever the hell, you know, whatever it is, like they've never actually done anything for it. So it's, it's 
difficult for them to um, actually have a formula that they can sell. Whereas like I just have this, this teaching program, I've created multiple uh, million dollar sellers and things. So I know what I'm doing. And so when I coach people through it, um, I'm able to take their personality and help it shine and help them pivot whenever they're talking to somebody that isn't, um, you know, if I'm talking, I might be talking to somebody a little bit differently if I was on a comedic podcast versus the social media marketing hour. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so number okay, three, that's number two, number three. Yes. Yeah. There's only two more. I'll, I'll let you go. Then. Uh, number three is have a goal for the actual email itself. So um, anything you're writing, have a goal. You know, um, what I like to do is I like to do an actual goal of like what the call to action is, but then I like to do an emotional goal. How do I want them to feel when I'm, while I'm writing this, you know, and then I go through the, our actual formula when it comes to writing emails and, and whatnot. And I, and which actually leads to number four, which is creating an email and it could be, it doesn't have to be email. It could be, you know, a sales page. It can be a landing page, whatever it is. Um, there's two ways that I like to do it. Um, and it's actually, I think this one's kind of dependent on a personality too, because I like to do what I call writing the perfect sentence. So I get overwhelmed with the idea of like creating this email. And I, I, I don't know why, but I just, or the sales page, whatever. I just get like bogged down on this. Like, what am I going to say? How am I going to say it? And it's almost like the concept of getting a book, you know, like if you're like, you know what, I'm going to write a kid's book or I'm going to write a, a book, whatever it is. Um, you, you look at this book and you just like immediately get, immediately get writer's block. You know, you, you, you're like the beginning was, and then you have no idea what to say after that, you know, because you're just so overwhelmed with the idea of the, this, this novel and the, the epic arc that you're trying to take people through. So what I like to do is I like to think of it as the perfect sentence. So what I go basically step by step and, and by sentence, I really kind of mean, I guess, paragraph. You know, it's like sentences, I suppose I should say. Um, because I just take this little chunk and I say, okay, if this was everything I wanted to put in this email, how would I write this? As opposed to this entire spiel. And then I go, okay, so that's the beginning. I like that. Middle end. And then, of course, part of copywriting is trimming things down and, and editing. But at least I can get it out there and I know what I... I want them to feel emotionally and then I can understand the call to action. And I think about it in segments and then I worry about the transitions after the fact, if that makes any sense. I like the emotional goal thing. I like thinking about what you're trying to create on people. Uh, again, mm. it goes back to putting yourself in somebody else's shoes so you can understand what you're gonna be creating on that side, the emotional goal and exactly what do you wanna accomplish at the end of that communication. Do you want them to click somewhere? You want them to open up that, that particular link? What do you want to accomplish at the end of that thing? That's gonna help you become a good writer. Good tips, uh, fantastic stuff. Um, Julio, how can they contact you if they want some copywriting help, man? Sure, uh, well, you can, easiest way to do it is you can contact us at um, team, so T-E-A-M, at copyidentity.com. Uh, that could also be Julio at copyidentity.com, but a lot of people misspell Julio, so team is easy too. Seriously? Um, How can you misspell oh, yeah. Julio? Well, you know, it depends on where your, your location, I suppose. You know, I get Julio, uh, I get a bunch of different, you know, versions of it uh, with an H. You know, so there's a million different ways to, I suppose, some people do it. Um, and then finally, okay, so you can... Hold on, sorry, let me say ahead. this. Team at copyidentity.com if you guys want to contact Julio. And are you on social media, Julio? Yes, sir. So on pretty much every social platform, it's Copy Identity. Um, and we have a podcast called Copy ID too. So any of your guests want to come check that out, please do. And uh, I will, of course, while I have you here and I'm, I can feel free to pressure you, I totally invite you to uh, come to on, onto our podcast. I would love well. to, man. I would love to. We can definitely get that booked. You should contact with Devin uh -huh. and talk about that and we'll get the schedule. Yes, sir. Yeah, for sure. Fantastic stuff, man. Thank you for being here, Julio. It's been great. We are about 20 minutes past our time, but it's been fantastic. I'm sure it's given a lot of value to people. So um, important subject, man. Let's keep on killing it. Yes, sir. Thank you. And I appreciate your time. And thanks, everybody. Um, I'm excited to get to know everyone. All right. Okay. Talk to you later, Julio. All righty. Bye-bye. All right, guys, there you have it. Hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you want to contact uh, Julio, team at copyright, copyidentity.com, team at copyidentity.com. Such an important skill, which is copywriting. I can tell you right now, it's something that you need to master, something that I talk about quite a bit. On Facebook, I can tell you that if you look at an ad over here, okay, 
So this bottom section here, this is how it's divided. So we have a section over here, which is going to be the video or the image. And then over here at the bottom, you have call to actions. This is the, the, this is the structure of an ad. And at the top of it, you have copy. The first thing, and I, you guys can pay attention to this, the first thing that you see when you open up your Facebook news feed, the first thing that catches your attention is generally, even if this is very graphic, this is going to capture your attention, all right? The actual copy on that, on that entire post, because this is the element of an ad. It, it's a social media post, it could be organic, or it could be advertised. The copy on it, and I, and I like to be very clear in regards to what they're going to get one, when, when they consume that video. Uh, so an important area to develop, an important skill to develop is the subject of copywriting. So definitely check that out. All right, guys. So hope that you enjoyed it today. Uh, look forward for next week's social marketing hour. Uh, we only skipped one week last week because my dad was getting some attention and I was helping him out get through some things. And that's just the way it is. But we were here. Hope that you guys loved it. And uh, give me some feedback. Help me spread the word. Click that button that says share and help me reach more people because I do want to help them improve their businesses in this environment. All right. See you guys on the next episode.